Hello everyone and welcome to another video about me using Tana. Um, this time, around this time of year, I usually do my annual review. I don't really have a fixed process, so around the end of the year I start looking for, um, for other people's questionnaires and stuff like that. And this year I found um, uh, the an ultimate annual review by Peter Slavman and I found a video by Francesco D'Alessio and I sort of combined them into my own thing. Um, and I wanted to show you how I actually use it in Tana. So let's start. Um, first, if you want to get the ultimate annual review yourself, uh, you can simply go to Peter's website, uh, schlaf.com, um, and then you have the ultimate annual review right here. Uh, in order to get it, um, there is a link here somewhere, I think it is on the bottom, where you can uh, register and you will get an email and in that email there's actually uh, a link where you can have a PDF and a Google Doc and some other stuff. So if you look here, uh, if I actually go into the email that I got, I got some stuff. Um, if you look into the Google template, basically it is a list of exercises. Um, uh, it's nicely formatted and it has some quotes intermixed. And what I did is I converted it all into Tana, uh, into an annual review. Um, so let's get started and see how that looks. So first off, uh, in my previous videos, you've seen that I make weekly plans. Uh, because of a video by Francesco, I also started this year to try monthly plans and I'll make them ahead of time uh, based on the goals I set in my yearly plan. I've been using yearly plans for a while now, uh, but as I said, it hasn't been very structured. And the yearly plan will be a result of the annual review of the, the plan before. So this time, for instance, I have a yearly plan uh, for 2022 and I'll add my annual review. In this case, the annual review for 2022. I pre-formatted this yearly plan, a super tag to actually uh, select the annual review plan that our annual review a super tag than I uh, used before. And let's go into it. So basically this is a tana fight version of the, the Google Doc uh, from, from Peter Slavman. Uh, it has several sections, six to be, uh, to be exact, and it starts with moments and milestones. I really enjoyed this. Basically, what they ask you to do is to go through your calendar, go through your pictures, go through your mail, whatever resource you have, journals, and go and find moments, milestones, and memories that stand out. Um, you can do it by month, and I opted to do it by, by quarter. Uh, in each of these quarters. And I end up with a list of things that were memorable. So it's nice to have this sort of high level overview of what happened during the year. Um, this took me, I think about uh, around 30 minutes, something like that. I was rather fast. Um, uh, it was surprising that even though I went through my calendar and photos, then I still missed some stuff by sort of talking to some and other people. And uh, yeah, it's nice to reminisce. Next up is reflection and lessons. So basically this is a set of questions. So let's expand them all. Um, and here we go into all of these questions. So um, they're, they're separated in certain categories and I really liked answering all of these. Um, it takes some time because you can, you can sort of answer them as quickly or as thoroughly as you want. And I went through them, I think several times and this took me, yeah, around an hour, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so questions like, uh, what am I most proud of personally? What skills did I develop? What goals didn't I accomplish? What do I regret? Um, about uh, relationships who had a positive impact on me, about my health, uh, what lessons I learned. And I especially like this one also, what three to five year words or phrases would I use to describe? Oh, I think this needs to be 2023. No, 22. Yeah, last year. And what am I most grateful for? Then we move over to life assessment, which basically looks into your life in several dimensions um, and scores it. Um, so these are sort of like a prompt. Uh, so, okay, how do you feel your health was this year and how much you spent on it? 
Um, and then I, 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 I spent some time also sort of writing down specifically why this was true for me. Together, this uh, helped me answer these questions. So what three things stand out from this exercise and which dimensions am I motivated to focus on in 2023? And these tended to gravitate toward me towards the ones I scored lowest in. Uh, so in this case, for instance, health, I want to exercise a little bit more. And I think, um, yeah, leisure and play. I tend to focus a lot on work and I would like to have a little bit more balance there. Um, so there's a couple of things that came out of there that weren't well obvious to me when I started it. And I think that's also the great thing about these things. It's taking the time to actually reflect and then some stuff comes up that's really useful. So next up is identify your intentions. So in this case, it's again a set of questions. Uh, let's again expand them all. Um, and these go a little bit more deep into what you've just sort of uncovered. So what do I know that I, is to be true that I'm not acting on? What attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors do I want to shed? What activities do I want to walk away from? What do I want to start? And how do I want to challenge myself? And I also really like this, what permission do I need to give myself? Because often, um, it's about something that you feel maybe uh, you cannot do or it's not okay. And then it ends up, it's just a voice in your head and you need to break that down. So from this on, you went into a goal and action plan. Uh, again, uh, I really like his uh, definition of ambition. Um, uh, ambition is an internal desire to be, do, become or create something new, better or different that is aligned with who we are and what we value. I think in his uh, his essay, I think it's uh, yeah, it links to it here also in the Google Doc. He he has this interesting relationship with the word ambition that I kind of recognize. It's 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 this oh I want to conquer the world and it's something this yeah I don't know it doesn't really fit with me. But he rephrases it as something you can become um, both as a person uh, and on every dimension. So. What I did, and I actually took this from the, uh, the essay that he wrote, and I defined what my purpose and ambition would be, what I wanted to be, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to become, and what I wanted to create. And by filling out each of these, uh, it helped me sort of brainstorm the goals that I'd like to set for myself for the upcoming year. Uh, and again, I selected, I think, not three, but four goals in the end. And then they ask you to answer these questions around these goals. And it was surprisingly helpful again, especially what three specific small steps can I take to get started. Um, and these things sort of helped uh, make these real and a little bit more actionable. So I ended up with a, with a table filled with these things. And then it asks you to write a letter to your future self. Now this is all part of the uh, Steve Schlafman part. And I really enjoyed doing it. it Took me around I think four or five hours so it's a reasonable chunk of time but I do think it was worth it. Um, one of the things I do notice is that these things though I enjoy doing them in the moment um, they sort of well stay in that moment and they don't really become actionable and that's where Francesco came in and his video he um, he really triggered me to do something and make the plan more actionable and I liked that what he did or what he suggested is to incorporate these goals, which are basically my yearly goals for 2023, and add them to monthly plans ahead of time. So what I did is I created uh, six monthly plans. So like this, uh, monthly plan 2023, month one. And I go into them and I look at my yearly goals and I sort of make smaller, more manageable uh, goals that I think are manageable in that month. So for instance, I want to exercise more and I want to take small steps. So my goal for this month might be uh, to simply go out uh, and take walks every morning. Um, every morning. 
One of the things I also noticed that I really get inspired by listening to podcasts and I want to have more time for this. So this is a perfect opportunity to combine these two because when I look out the window and I see it's cold, then I tend to be lazy and not want to walk outside. But uh, hopefully if I combine this with listening to a podcast, then I can motivate myself because I will actually have more time for these things. So I went through about half the year. Um, after half a year, I found it a little bit difficult to project further. Um, so basically around well, the middle of the year, I, I just put a goal there to reevaluate and to look at my goals again and to reflect again, maybe go back to the annual review, perhaps redo it, um, and uh, then uh, to fill out the rest of the monthly plans. One of the things I also really liked is that he added two bullets like achievements and losses, which you fill in at the end of the month. So you have a reason to come back to look at the goals and see, hey, what did I do this year that actually or this month that actually um, uh, can be labeled as an, as an achievement and what can be labeled as a loss? And I think this is a good way to do a monthly reflection and sort of revisit these things. So basically, that's what I wanted to share with all of you today. Um, I'll leave the links for everything I discussed here uh, on the on the comment field in the in the YouTube video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, thank you, and see you next time.